Welcome back. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website, and that's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to see us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Now, besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Now, the two World Pension Summits may have thrown up and trashed up issues of pensioners in Nigeria, but many believe that every suggestion made there may not be fruitful if no action follows correspondingly and the discussions of, at the Transcor Hilton in Abuja venue of the summit. Reactions have been greeting the talks by professionals and experts at the summit, several from those affected by the issue, the pensioners themselves. Now to take a look at these issues as they affect retirees across Nigeria, I'm joined on the program by a pensioner, Mr. David Adodo. He's also the chairman concerned federal pensioners in Nigeria. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, protests by senior citizens asking for entitlements are as popular as those of workers who are still in government asking for their salaries. Now, what is your experience? Mm, it is unfortunate. That's number one. We don't even know those representing us in the Pencom Summit. Uh, is, pensioners, is this pension summit all over the world? Work pension summit. Who, who, what are the characteristics? of those representing pensioners. That's, we need to ask that. Who are they? Don't you have a federal body, the federal, the, 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 the body, the, the pension bodies in the country? We call them Nigeria Union you know, of Pensioners. But unfortunately, yes. they, operate, uh, they operate unionism of convenience, which is not supposed to be so. Are you, so saying, that the, are you saying that the pension uh, bodies across Nigeria are not presenting a united front? Yeah, yeah, that is exactly the uh, that's exactly the case. Number one, they are weak and they are old, short of ideas. Unfortunately, we still believe that if you are a pensioner in Nigeria, you have to be old, using walking stick, walking like a, a, a man that is that, that is uh, physically uh, challenged. It's not supposed to be so. We now have vibrant young men. Uh, during Obasanjo, uh, General Obasanjo, with due respect, he downsized a lot of pensioners, young men, able-bodied men, and they are vibrant. So we can, we, they, they, they were ready to take over the leadership of the pension. But unfortunately, we still have this mentality, the old men must be there, you must be 100 years, my city, it's not, it's, it doesn't work like that, but things change. But unfortunately, they, 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 they are not living up to expectations. They are still afraid. They cannot present us, they cannot represent us very well. They did not even understand the principle of unionism. So that's the well, most of them, when they were in service, they never practiced trade unionism. They were afraid. Which of these organizations are Nigeria Union of Pensioners. I have about, I mean, we have about 85, 90 years old man representing us. That's an insult. Where we are, it's an old man. And I can't, that man should be asked to stay aside. I'm sorry, but if he's, if, I don't know the person you're referring to, but if he's old, but if he's fit, is he not fit You cannot fit be old and fit. This job is still Being old does not mean that you're it's ill. It's a tough job. Listen to me. Unionism is not politics. People need results. They want to, they want results. They want to get something out of you. So you need to be dynamic. You need to be fit. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's let's look at the World Pension Summit now in Abuja, which has raised issues of funding, at uh, proper management and safekeeping of the funds. We heard what the president, Chief Olusha Gwabasanjo, said as far as trusting those in whose uh, 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 who have that money uh, to to distribute. At the end of the day, what what do you make of of the entire gamut? A uh, you lot know, of sad experiences, bad experience. People are entrusted with Nigerian pension money to pay these poor old women and men that were honest while they while serving the country. They were very plain, they were honest, they were not taught to love money. But unfortunately, this money got to the wrong hand. You ask the question, what is the criteria being used? 
you know, when you want to choose a leader for pensioners or a director in the pension office, what criteria do you use? You just bring in somebody who knew nothing about the pension. That has been our problem. You, you, you politicize people's welfare. You politicize people's destiny. It's unfortunate. A lot of pensioners have died because we, the, 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 the wrong peg in the right hole. That has been the issue. And it has affected all our lives. You see, there are certain things we do in this country that God is not happy about it. Listen to me. Pension was supposed to be a glorifying thing after serving your country. And in our own time, we serve wholeheartedly. We love our job. We have been paying mega salary. We're happy, hoping, and knowing that after the whole services, you are going to enjoy your life. But unfortunately, I never, I don't know who introduced certain policies and principles. And I, I don't know. That. We'll, we'll see if we can get to that again. But pres uh, former President Chief Abbasanjo introduced the contributory pension scheme. It's been lauded even by the current administration and by all and sundry as a a very good idea. Uh, uh, how far along do you think that has helped? It did not help and it has not worked. Why? Uh, Why do you say that? President Olubarido, with due respect, I want to say he created most of these problems. He wasn't aware of, he, in fact, in fact, he didn't even know Nigeria very well when, when he introduced all these things. Why are you saying it did not work? Why I said it did not work? Because you, why can't you downsize able young men and women? for economic reason. It's, it's, not, it's not done anywhere in the whole world. There are people who are capable, they are competent, they can work. And all of a sudden, without no reason, we cannot manage our economic well, we now downside all of them, they become social users. So it did not work. What he introduced was just unfortunate. I'm sure he's regretting it now, because it did not really work, because... If you're talking about the pension scheme, he's not regretting the pension scheme. If you're talking about uh, other issues surrounding it, we're talking about the deductions made, the 7 million people who are captured in the database of contributory pensions across Nigeria. It is unfortunate. Who have been also, some of whom have also been able to access those funds as time has gone along. No, let me tell you. You see, we introduced a very bad system. Ordinarily, we have head of service. When they were there, when they took over the whole thing, I'm talking about federal retirees now. You see, what, you know what happened? Let me tell you, and I will tell you Nigerians this, with all sense of boldness. Baba Sanjo, with due respect, introduced all those things to satisfy certain people. Like some insurance company owned by his friends. So look, they'll call him, advise him, do this, do this, divide this, and do this, bring those pensioners down here. That in Hadana work. They are suffering and they are crying. We, we have head of service, that was handling our pension correctly. There was no problem. They were doing well. We have documentation. There was no corruption. You go there, they give you identity card. I mean, I mean, I mean, they, they pay you your money without any scheme, any scheme pay. But now people just crippled because you know the president just come and bring funny ideas that has created problem for all pensioners in Nigeria right now. You are speaking. You are speaking uh, uh, for yourself. Not for myself. These, view, these views of yours are obviously not the views of Channels Television. Are they the views of, of the concerned federal pensioners in Nigeria? When I say concern, Which organization you say you are the chairman? Are they, are they, the, me, views, the, are view, they the views of your, the view of your of organization? This is the view of all pensioners in Nigeria. Listen to me. I control 80% of federal pensioners in this country, all over the country. Listen to me. We are federal retirees. We have different categories of pensioners. We have some Nigerian Airways some custom, and this is a money-making organization. We're talking about pure federal retirees that has created national embarrassment for a very long time. Listen to me, please. We'll, we'll, we'll have to leave it there, though, because of time constraints, uh, Mr. Adodo. Uh, Mr. Adodo is the, Mr. David Adodo is the chairman concerned federal pensioners in Nigeria. We hope that across the board, pensioners in Nigeria, and indeed across the, the continent as well, are better served uh, by the uh, in the countries they are by the administrators of the pensions sorry that's all we have time okay. for we're going to take a break now and when we come back the chief of army staff speaks on carrying the army along in investigations into human rights violations please stay with us Stay connected to the world with the Channels TV app for mobile to get all the stories around the world available on Android, iOS and Windows phones. Tap the expertise you trust 
Touch the stories that touch you. Anytime, anywhere. Channel CB at the mobile. The news at your fingertips. Welcome back. The military have appealed to human rights organizations to carry the armed forces along during investigations into human rights violation cases involving the armed forces. Now, speaking at a seminar uh, on the administration of military justice system, the chief of army staff, General Tukubrutai, explained that most times the military is indicted before they are asked to comment on the recommendations of a report. General Burutai says the military should be involved from the moment the violations are identified and co-opted into the investigation process. Revelations that many soldiers were tried by a court-martial and sometimes summarily dismissed owing to their refusal to fight the insurgents brought shock given how ill-equipped they were. Um. At this gathering of military lawyers and human rights bodies, the military justice system, which has long been overlooked, was discussed. And one issue that took center stage is the state of human rights within the Nigerian army. There was mistrust between the civilian population, particularly in the Northeast and the Nigerian military. This prevented the civilian population from providing the requisite information that our military needed in order to combat and repress the insurgents. The military established a human rights desk to address the perceived impunity carried out in the army. The chief of army staff warns the military to be involved in every investigation of an alleged human rights abuse. The appeal is we should be contacted right from the start. Once we start the research, let us know if there is any allegation against uh, the army in this case, let us know quickly so that we can jointly investigate and then whatever the conclusion that will be arrived at, you know, everybody is carried along. The aim of this dialogue is to improve the human rights record of the Nigerian military. The fact that the military has subjected its um, rules of engagement to um, public discussion, at least among the human rights concerns, that is plus. Are we where we are supposed to be? Not yet. But I think the fact that we can begin the engagement process is definitely positive. The challenge of compliance with the minimum human rights standard in the administration of military justice in Nigeria has remained a frontline issue. This is one area the military hierarchy wants to tackle. Gloria Umezuki, Channel Television News. Former President Chief Olusegun Obasanjo has thrown his weight behind the sale of some public assets. The former president, who was speaking at the two-day National Council on Finance and Economic Development Conference in Nabokuta, the Ogun State Capital, however, warned that they must be sold, they must not be sold to cabals. Chief Abbasanjo also is suggesting that government should consider selling some shares of the NNPC to members of the public, but with a note of caution. We'll say that no earthly reason why 49% of NMPC cannot be privatized. Not, please, please, don't, uh, don't, don't clap yet. Don't leave it out into cabals, friends and relations and kids and kin. And um, no, let it go public. Public. But even my driver can buy 10 shares of the NNPC that, can, that have gone. And there should be limit of what shares any individual or any corporate organization can buy. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, Nigeria's former president. And now to the southeast, and the Abia State Police Commissioner Adelaide Oyebade has called on parents and caregivers to monitor the activities of their wards, especially with respect to the increasingly uh, increasing spate of kidnapping, which is taking several new dimensions. He said this while parading two suspects, Sunday Bright from Uromi in Edo State and Grace Igwe from Umahia, who demanded a ransom from Grace's parents in the disguise that she was kidnapped and will be killed by her abductors if they de delayed or informed the police. The police later discovered that the two suspects are friends and that the victim, Grace, and the, kidnapper, the kidnappers orchestrated the crime. Case closed. And that's where we leave it for this edition of News Across Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I'm Ulumide Mokou.